So now we can really dig in and do a step-by-step -step of how we go about laying out something like the scene we're seeing above. So we've made our grease pencil object uh, and we've got our simple man. So now we can start moving that around the 3D space to begin our layout stage of the process. So remember, we're still in object mode for the time being and we'll be here for a while as we block things up. So here again, we have our 2D artwork, which is contained within a three dimensional object, okay, within 3D space. So that means we can move it about, position it within 3D space and therefore lay it out just like you would any 3D object. So now we want to move our object to the start position of whatever path that we want the action to take. So move it, and I want to keyframe it, press I, that'll bring up a drop down menu. In that drop down menu, you want to select block rot scale. And that means location, rotation, and scale. All of that will be contained within the keyframe. So uh, that's where it is, uh, what orientation it's rotated to, and the scale of the object. So to create my second keyframe now, I move the uh, along in the timeline, I move to 40, press I, lock rot scale again. There's my second keyframe, and now you can see it's animating for me. Just like, this is how you animate objects in any 3D application. But this time, we have a 2D piece of artwork within it. And now I'll move my position again, move the timeline again, create a new keyframe. And you can just keep doing this to plot out the, the path you want to take. An alternative way of actually moving your object around the scene is to use the cursor mode. So if you position your cursor somewhere with shift, right click, and then you hold shift and S, you'll have a radial menu come up and select the top, which is selection to cursor, and it will actually pop to that place in the 3D space. Then you can key it. Then you can move your cursor again, shift S, selection to cursor, pop. You know, you need to pop it up sometimes as well, iframe it, done. So you can just plot out your whole path that way too. I find this way of moving things around the scene uh, really, really useful. So as we briefly touched on earlier about surface mode, they can be really good for do doing floor plans. So what I'm doing now is I've just created a new blank grease pencil object and I'm gonna select uh, surface mode. And uh, in doing so, I'm just going to draw a, a kind of rough path on the floor as to where the action that I'm intending to uh, demonstrate here is going to go. So I'm going to take him towards those bricks and back around in that kind of arc. So that just gives me a, a visual guideline of where I want the object to be animated. Uh, it's, it really is just a guide. <clears throat> so here I've keyframed the character in the, on the first keyframe and I moved along. I'm using the cursor mode as demonstrated to jump to that position, pop him up so he's feet level of flat, keyframed, move the cursor, uh, sorry, move the timeline, then move my cursor to the, on top of the bricks. Uh, then I'm using the cursor mode to pop him to that position. I've accidentally created a duplicate here because I pressed shift and D. Uh, you'll have to forgive me that trespass and I will delete him in a moment. Um, so yeah, you just keep going. You keep moving the character along and the timeline along and cre creating a keyframe each time uh, so that you have the character move along the path that you want them to. <laughs> so to me, this is one of the things that really drew me to Blender. I've been looking for a workflow that allowed me to do something like this for a very long time. I'm literally moving around the 2D objects in 3D space, genuinely, just like it would be if I was using a 3D object in 3D space. And uh, there are other softwares that kind of do this sort of thing, but not to this degree. The flexibility this gives you because everything is independent from one another is just unparalleled as far as I'm aware of. Um, and now that we've, uh, you can see here, the keyframes are all in, you can see the, the, um, the path is quite smooth. So that'll do for our layout path for the object segment of this. And now we can actually get in and start drawing some rough character layers into the grease pencil layers. As demonstrated earlier, I'll make a new grease pencil layer now for my sort of rough animation layer on top of this. Um, so I've selected the black um, material and I'm just grabbing a brush here now. And it's really roughing out, blocking out, uh, basically human form running in a, in a kind of leaning forward kind of position. The artwork on this one's going to be really loose. You'll see uh, much tighter artwork in the uh, 
final examples that I use in a little while. So um, once I'm done with that one, I move the timeline to the next position that I want to make. Now remember, you don't have to move the object anymore, that's all done, right? So as soon as you start drawing, you see a new keyframe pops up and it blanks the artwork that was already on it. And you're like, ah, shit, where did that go? I am got its reference point now. There's no onion skin happening here. So in order to get the onion skin, there's a few settings you have to click on. One is on the actual grease pencil layer itself. It's like a multiple circles thing. And then the other bit is in this menu that's dropped down here. You have to click on onion skin and you can also change the opacity of um, the other layers. And down on the right there, as you can see the green and blue, that's the color of your previous and next keyframes. So you can change that so that you, like you can see right now that the previous keyframe is green. So I've moved him along again now and I'm gonna start drawing the next thing and you see it blanks it but you can still see the previous panel now because the onion skin is on. And you can have, um, you can change the settings again. So it actually shows, you know, let, let's say you've done six previous panels. You can see all of, you'll be able to see all of those if you want to. I just don't need to right now. So I moved it along again, doing my next little sketch as he starts to kind of jump towards the bricks. Again, super loose. <laughs> At this stage, don't even think about doing good artwork. This is literally layout and it's not, you're never going to clean this stuff up anyway, right? Because this is literally like a layout pass. Uh, once you get into choosing your camera angles, it's once you've kind of locked down your camera angles, then you want to bother with like really refining what the artwork looks like from the angle you're now kind of committed to looking it through. Right now, stick men, star men, scribbles, continuous line drawings. That's how I work. When I'm at this stage anyway, I'm just scribbling shit down. <laughs> so there's a leg trying to like kind of contact with the top of the uh, the bricks there for him to kind of just momentarily kind of skip over it. You just keep feeling this stuff out. Keep moving the position. As you can see, you just move it and you stand and you draw and it just creates the next keyframe on the timeline. You don't have to like click I or anything like that in Grease Pencil, it's all automated. So uh, that's that's really cool. So if you don't draw like the next pose, for instance, it just kind of holds the previous position and slides it along. I will demonstrate later how to not have it slide and to have it step if you prefer that. You'll see the difference later. But for now, I'm just going to leave it sliding. That's called linear interpolation. The, option, the other option is constant interpolation, which is what I refer to as stepped. So yeah, still sketching him out here, um, and we're almost done for this like for this for this layer. That's that's all the purpose of this is just to block out a really rough form, so that we can see how it looks when we scrub back through it. So let's take a look. So that is in essence the very very basis of what I'm doing here. It's a 2D multiple panel storyboarder animation. Uh, within a 3D object that is moving through space. Genuinely moving through space. And therefore you have all this, you can see right now in the viewport, the flexibility you've got to already start playing with right now what camera angles should I choose to actually refine this from. And it works to a relatively flexible degree. It doesn't really break until you get right up on top of it or you go really high or really too far. So look, look at this flexibility you've got here to just think through scenes. It's just great. I love it. It gives us 2D artists the kind of flexibility that 3D artists have when they're doing layout. You know, they kind of lay out the animation and then they're looking, or they, or they have the opportunity at least to just play with cameras after the animation is done. Um, whereas when we draw a storyboard or, or an artwork and then someone goes, oh, could we try it from you know, 20 degrees around to the right, you know, and then you just have to redraw it all or, or repurpose what you can. And, but this is just the flexibility you get here is insane. So at this point, I'm, I've am i created a new grease pencil layer on top again now, and it's a, you know, like a semi cleaner, it's a slightly better drawing. It's still not going to be great. So don't expect to be impressed. Um, whenever I'm recording, the lag is insane. So I'm just kind of laying in some basic lines and stuff here. Um, just to demonstrate that this is the process, right? So you've done your really stinking rough, like, um, 
you know, your scribble layer, your, your, your layout pass, and now you're, you're doing something a little bit more refined so that, you know, you, at least you can read it a bit better. Or um, So if you had done a really confident rough the first time around, or even now you were doing a really confident rough, then you would repeat this process by creating a new layer again, and that would be your cleanup layer. And then you start cleaning it up, making it look lovely. And then you can add your fill layers. Uh, you can add any effects layers. You can you just keep going. You can keep going. I mean, it's blended grease pencil is a fully fledged um, 2D animation um, tool. You can make absolutely gorgeous artwork with it, especially with the with the new uh, Vertex paint that's just come out. Um, I haven't tried that yet, but the, the results of that are beautiful. Um, so again, I'm just moving it along. I'm just cleaning it up. Uh, be careful. What you need to be careful of though is go to make sure you go to the next keyframe before you then draw your new thing because otherwise your cleanup layers will be kind of out of sync with your rough layers so you just go along to the timeline to the keyframes that's already there and then draw um if you actually press up and down on the the arrow buttons on your on your laptop or your, your computer um that'll jump to the next keyframe on that layer um it kind of doesn't do it unfortunately until You've actually got a keyframe on it, so it's it's a little difficult, but essentially just rub along to the next keyframe and then draw. Okay, so we've uh, we've set up our, our grease pencil object in spaces layout. We've animated a couple of rough panels so that it continues the action across the scene. Uh, so now it's time to start looking at those angles and getting some cameras set up. So you create a camera in the same way you create anything else is you hold shift and A, and then you roll down the camera and one will pop up in the scene. There's already one by default in any scene in Blender. And to get into that, you just press zero. So once you're inside it, you can actually manipulate the position of the camera. In order to do that, in the draw on the tab menu we've got here, you click on the uh, lock camera to view setting. If that is off, you kind of, um, you can, you can choose how far up the framing of the camera is, right? It kind of goes in and out. Whereas if you put it on, you actually control the camera and the framing stays the same. Once you've got that setting on, you're essentially controlling the camera from within this viewport. To create keyframes for the camera, make sure the actual camera is selected. It'll actually go orange around the outside of the frame you can see there. I've created one keyframe at the beginning. I've moved now to another keyframe, created that. So now you can see the camera's animating. It's the same principle for everything. You create a start keyframe, you create an end keyframe, and then it fills the rest in for you. So I'm just kind of tweaking here. I'm changing the camera angle a little. Very briefly about camera settings and lenses. On the bottom right here, you can see I've switched uh, the settings to horizontal and 24 millimeters. And then at the top here, this is our actual field, field of view uh, or our uh, um, our lens length. So uh, lower the number, the wider the lens, the more you actually fit into the framing so you can get big, wide, dramatic compositions. It tends to distort then if you get close to things. Uh, long lenses are higher numbers and the long or narrow lens, some people call them, and they push uh, things together. So you kind of compress the space. So if you're looking for like really intense close-ups between two characters and a long lens works really well for that. Or if you want a big, massive vista you know, you might want a wide lens. Um, just experiment with it. 